Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you all about my first impressions of Elden Ring. I've played the game now for 20 to 30 hours, and I'd like to sit down and talk about my experiences with the game, the positives, the negatives, the popular criticisms, the positive things that people have said about it, and just in general have a conversation about Elden Ring. Now, a lot of you guys might not know this, but I've played every single From Software game from start to finish. I've beaten every single uh, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, uh, Demon Souls. I've beaten all these games, I think, almost every single one of them multiple times in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 I've beaten multiple 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 times and so I've played these games for collectively over a thousand hours maybe thousands of hours and so it's very exciting for me to talk about the games because I've always been very passionate about them and a TLDR to this video is that Elden Ring is no different although it is very very different game so I'd like to basically start by saying that Elden Ring has been probably the most anticipated game that we've had in the past three or four years I forgot when it got a Announced. I remember I went back and I looked at a video of myself watching the first Elden Ring trailer and it was actually during the Classic WoW beta. So it was like way before even Classic WoW came out. So I'm talking like 2018, 2019. People have looked forward to this game for years now and it's finally out. And I do think that Elden Ring to a certain degree suffers from the same problem that a game like Cyberpunk and a game like uh, Classic WoW for that matter uh, suffers from is that people place such high expectations on this game, such uh, un realistic expectations on this game that no thing that actually exists in the real world could ever match up to those expectations because a lot of those expectations are the expectation of an emotional feeling that the game would give you probably for a lot of these people similar to the emotional feeling that they had playing their first Souls game. I know for me it was Dark Souls 1. So Elden Ring did kind of in a way get set up to fail by those people because it would be impossible for the game to give you your first experience back but I think that with an open world and with a very non-linear progression path, I think it did the best job that it possibly could. And overall, my experience with Elden Ring is that I've really enjoyed it a lot, and I think a lot of other people have too. If you go back and you look at the Steam charts for the game, you'll see that Elden Ring's peak players of all time is like astronomically higher than like Sekiro's or Dark Souls 3's, which are from software's most two recent uh, releases. And why do I think that's significant? I think that's significant because it shows that Elden Ring really did break these Soulsborne games out into the mainstream in a way that Sekiro and Dark Souls 3 clearly did not really do. And it really shows that how powerful like the media behind it was, how popular the game was, how big the hype was, because it just absolutely eclipsed all of the other releases of all of these other games. And again, I think it's kind of in many ways warranted. However, one thing that's happened with that is that because a lot of these people are sometimes first-time Souls players or first-time players of any game that's similar to this, we've had a lot of people who have said that uh, the game is too hard, they've said that uh, there are elements of the game that they don't like, and I think there are a lot of people who just see the combat and they're like, wait a second, this guy's just hitting and rolling. And for me, and for a lot of other guys, I'm like, yeah, it's fucking awesome, look how clean these rolls are, he rolled right under the sword and he didn't get hit, you know? It's like, oh man, that iframe on that explosion was so cool, right? But for an average person that's like, you know, not into the Soulsborne games, uh, who gives a fuck, right? Like, it's just, you're just hitting and rolling. But for, for me and for a lot of other people, oh man, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we love it. So um, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about that because I do think that there have been a lot of people who have tried to make Elden Ring their first Souls game. And I think that there have been a lot of those people who have uh, frustrated themselves to no end. And I'd like to talk a little bit about why. Uh, basically, Elden Ring is a game that gives you a lot of freedom. And uh, a game that gives you a lot of freedom is usually a game that gives you a lot of ways to fail. And the fact is that a lot of people, as soon as they got through the tutorial, and uh, that probably annoyed them too, if it's their first game, they fight against the boss, it just instantly kills them. And uh, then they go and they fight the tree knight, and he just absolutely fucking flattens them. And to be fair, that happened to me too. But I know these games and I know how they work, so it's not really my first rodeo. And I came back very shortly after and killed him. But it was a long fight, and it was very uh, drawn out, and it was hard to do, right? Especially I was doing it like as soon, like with starter, all starter gear, and I had just started playing the game. 
And I think also people go out, they talk to the first NPC, and one of the things that many people do is they probably beeline straight to market. And this is, in my opinion, the worst decision that you can possibly make in the game. Because if you're a new player, nothing is going to make you hate the game more than if you've never done a Souls game before and you go straight up against Margit and you get your fucking shit pushed in. And to be fair, I've said before on my stream, I do think that Margit is probably too hard of a first boss. And it's not that he's really too hard of a first boss, it's that he's too hard of the first boss that most players encounter because they're not familiar with the way that these Soulsborne and open world games are supposed to be played. And I think that it, it's kind of a, uh, a contradiction in a lot of ways because games like that could use a lot more direction to tell the player what to do, but Souls games are fundamentally uh, open-ended. They're fundamentally not giving you a lot of direction, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people like them, but it's also the reason why a lot of people, including myself even sometimes, get quite frustrated with Elden Ring. So I see a lot of people that they try to go and do Margaret, and they just get fucking destroyed. They're doing almost no damage to them. And for me, I, I went and I fought the boss. I did like two attempts. So it's like, oh, my weapon's doing like half damage. It seems like I'm clearly underleveled for this. I'm going to go do some other stuff. I go do some caves. I, you know, ride around, just kill sheep, and just fuck around for a couple of hours. Come back, and I one-shot Margaret, right? And this is after I had done it in a, in a beta test before, so it's not my first time ever. I'm not that good. But uh, I did... I get, get I, I did actually get them on my first try whenever I did it on the uh, on the live game. And uh, I think there's a lot of people that didn't really do that. They just threw themselves at Margit for hours and hours and hours, and they stopped playing the game out of frustration. Uh, it, it's really hard to balance that, and I think that that's probably the reason why a lot of people have gotten frustrated about Elden Ring, is situations like that where, because there's not really a definitive guiding, uh, guiding light or north star in the game, even though there really is, it's a, it's a north tree, not a north star, uh, but in a lot of ways, the game doesn't really have as much hand-holding, and so because of that, a lot of people drift off, and they do different things, and they encounter areas where they just get destroyed, and it frustrates them, and it's demoralizing, and they decide to stop playing. I think this is definitely not a good thing about the game, and I think this is a uh, a team effort between like developers, you know, like making it a little bit uh, too easy to do that, and then at the same time, uh, players uh, not really trying to think for themselves and uh, think out of the box enough. I think it is a little bit of both, but overall, as I said before, uh, that has been a problem with me a few times. I remember I went to this area with like these really, really big dogs and this really, really big bird. It's where you get the great sword and like these animals, like they, they did like over half my health in like one hit or something like that. So I've had to experience that for myself personally. Sorry, I had to reject a call there. And um, it was quite intense, but in a way it also adds to the intensity of the game. And I also want to talk a little bit more about like my personal uh, experiences with the game and some like little criticisms that I have and things that I uh, do and don't like about the game. I think that the main thing about the game, and this is the From Software game's like most important thing, is the combat. And the combat and the fundamental gameplay of Elden Ring, I think, takes all of the best elements of every single Souls game and it puts them together. It has the the visceral attacks and the way that it feels whenever you get a visceral attack in Bloodborne. It's got jumping, like in Sekiro, and it's got uh, abilities that interact with jumping. Uh, it's got, obviously, the Dark Souls 3 rolling, uh, about Dark Souls 3 rolling, I would say. So it's taken all of the best things of, in my opinion, the three best Souls games in terms of uh, combat, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro, and it's taken these three games, and it's taken, and even, by the way, it's even taken some things out of Dark Souls 2, because Dark Souls 2, I hate Dark Souls 2. However, I mean, Dark Souls 2 is a game that maybe had 100 bad ideas, but it still had 10 or 20 really, really, really fucking good ideas. And one of those was power stancing, and that was also brought back with Elden Ring as well. So, uh, you know, as a uh, great sword user, I think this is, uh, this is great. So um, anyway, uh, I've, been, I've enjoyed that and I look forward to being able to have a second one quite soon. So uh, overall, I think that a lot of people have probably, uh, they've, they've been in that same experience and they've had that same thing happen to them where they've seen the combat and they probably might think the combat could be boring, 
but there's a lot of nuances to the combat, especially with the Ashes of War and the other abilities that you can have. And I think that the combat in a lot of ways is something that's nuances really translate well to an audience of people who are initiated to the type of game that it is. But to an average person, they probably don't really understand it. It's like the difference between watching a, um, you know, 2.2K, I don't really know chess that well, right? But watching a 2.2K rated chess player versus like a 1.1K rated chess player uh, is probably the same in a, lot of, in a lot of ways for people that don't really know anything about chess because they don't understand it that well. And I think it's the same thing with WoW Arena and a lot of these games that have very high skill caps is that an average uninitiated person will not really understand, uh, you know, for example, like controlling bullet spray patterns in CSGO. They'll just see somebody shooting at the floor with an AK-47 and think to themselves, why the fuck are they doing that? So I do think that that's been a problem with, uh, with a lot of the people and this is just kind of what happens whenever you have a game uh, Elden Ring is is not made for a massive mainstream audience. Elden Ring is made as kind of a final draft, as a magnum opus of all of the uh, From Software games put together. And it's mainly a game that is, if anything, like a love letter to the people that have supported these games for many, many years by taking everything good about all of them and putting them all together into one and making it a huge world. So I think that there's a lot of people who are not necessarily appreciative of that and that don't really understand the importance of that and the power of that and they'll play the game and they'll be frustrated. Uh, I think for me, uh, I've gotten frustrated a lot about like not really knowing where to go, but I'm not really sure if that's particularly a problem with me or it's a problem with uh, the stream. So like for me, uh, streaming Elden Ring, I think is not really as exciting as streaming something like Dark Souls 3 because you have a lot of downtime, you have a lot of travel time. And uh, there are certain games that are very good that don't necessarily translate to having a great stream environment for them. Uh, these are games that are like Breath of the Wild, like very open world games, slow paced games. Valheim was like this too. Valheim was an incredible game. It was one of the best games the year it came out. And I feel like it probably was the best game the year it came out. I loved it so much. I played the fuck out of Valheim. But the fact is that there's not really a lot of interesting or exciting things to do for stream content. And I think this is also, again, like a contradiction that I have to deal with as a content creator is that how do I play a game that is very slow paced? And to be honest, I think Elden Ring is a much better because I've, I've gone back and I've played the game off stream and I've like really enjoyed it a lot more because I don't feel like the pressure to go, go, go. I don't feel the pressure to get to the next boss. I don't feel the pressure to when's the next hype moment, when's the next, you know, moment of suspense to try to keep people engaged with the stream. I just play the game and I just take it as it comes. It's like, oh, there's a cave. Cool. Oh, let's go see what's in that house. Cool. Right. And I think that the way that you play an open world game and the way that you stream are in a lot of ways opposites. So it's going to be harder for me to really uh, be able to kind of uh, reconcile those two differences. I, I've thought about like just not playing Elden Ring at all on stream anymore, but I, I like it too much. And I, I'm, I'm going to probably play it tomorrow. <laughs> like, to be honest, after I do like the WoW Raid and everything, I'm probably just going to go back and play it tomorrow too because I do really like the game, even though I fucking hate the game too. And so uh, anyway, uh, so talking about some of the other uh, differences in the combat, I think this is one thing that's like a, a definitely a huge nuance is that a lot of NPCs have much better programmed AI to predict whenever you're going to roll to predict, like, you know, like, for example, like in a Sekiro, last boss to Ishin, uh, Genichiro, first boss uh, in, in, the, in the fight, every single time that you go to uh, go for a healing gourd, he automatically does the uh, the spear thing that you can Mariki counter, right? Or like, not spear. It's He, he uses his katana to try to, to, to stab you. And so if you want to heal on that first phase, you either have to run really far away from him, or actually you see some speedrunners that abuse this technique, is that they heal at the very beginning to cause him to run to them so they can get an easy Mariki counter and uh, increase his posture bar very early on. So uh, basically the point that I'm making here is that he is programmed to, if you heal, he does this ability. And I think there's a lot of other cases in, in uh, sorry, uh, I was about to say Bloodborne, in Elden Ring that follow the same paradigm, that are programmed in the same way. So uh, the bosses are programmed to punish you for taking heals. They're programmed to uh, attack you like Crucible Knight. I mean, I don't know if it's programmed this way, but it sure fucking feels like it. Uh, every single time I try to go for a heal, he goes for the stab, you know? 
And uh, it's, it's hard, right? Especially for a new player that, again, is uninitiated. And I think this is what's happened a lot, is that this is the reason why you have some people saying Elden Ring is the easiest Souls game, and then you have other people saying Elden Ring is impossible. How the fuck can you even beat this game? This game's impossible. And I think that's the big reason, is that uh, a lot of people don't really get a lot of those nuances or know really what to do. And um, there are some bosses, and in my opinion, some like kind of cheap tricks uh, that the game has. It did remind me a little bit of Dark Souls 2, where you walk through a door and something hits you in the back, or uh, you know, you have like these NPCs, these like weird like uh, centipede type guys that like lean up, and then they shoot like fucking 50 uh, you know ballistic missiles that are aimbotting into you that move at a, a, a fucking millions you know miles a second, and they just instantly hit you. It's just super annoying. They're the ones in the cave with like the scythes and everything. Oh my god, that pissed me off so much. And like yeah. It has its its share of bullshit enemies and annoying combat, etc. But overall, as I've said before, a lot of the bosses are pretty good. Uh, the criticisms that I would have really for the bosses, or again, I do think that Margaret is probably too hard of a first boss. And I, I think that this is also like a, a quantitative thing. Uh, if you look at the amount of time that people spend playing the game, and then you compare it to whenever they kill Margaret, and then you compare that to the amount of time that people would spend playing the game, and what boss they're fighting in, let's say, Dark Souls 2, or 3, or 1, or Demon Souls, uh, Margaret takes a whole lot more fucking damage, he does a whole lot more abilities, he's a harder boss, man. He definitely is, and I do think that, you know, having that boss, that wall, so early, uh, is very demoralizing for newer players that are uninitiated to the series. So, I don't really know. I mean, there's nothing they can really do about it now, right? I mean, they can't nerf it now, so fuck. I mean, it is what it is. But um, anyway, I, I do think that that's one criticism that I have. I think another thing that I really didn't like is that there were a few of the catacombs where you would get into this like very small enclosed room, and you would have to fight like two very large NPCs that are like uh, attacking you at the same time. I find that very claustrophobic, and I find it to be kind of like an artificial difficulty. It's like, oh, this isn't hard, it's only hard because you're in this very small place and you have two things attacking you. Uh, you could say that's difficulty, and it, you're right, it is. It's just that the difficulty frustrates me, and I don't really find it particularly fun. Uh, to contrast that, however, uh, there were some bosses, like Margaret, whenever you actually have good gear, that are so well designed. Like, Margaret as a boss is probably one of the best designed bosses that From Software has done. And I'm saying that, by the way, not doing the rest of the ra uh, not, I was about to say raids, uh, not doing the rest of the bosses. So I could actually come back and say later on, wait a second, actually, it gets even better. But I thought Margaret was an incredible boss, like with the hammer, uh, the way that he teaches you how to roll, he has his hand up, and if you attack him with that, he uses his dagger. Um, the way that, like, whenever he holds his staff up, if you move up to him, he does a faster attack that's harder to dodge, but it gives you more damage on him. If you don't run up to him, he charges to you and he does the double one. Like, that's really, really well programmed, and I think that a good player that's able to identify those patterns can really get a lot out of that and feel a certain level of mastery over the fight that makes uh, makes them feel fulfilled for doing it. So I think that many of the fights in uh, in Elden Ring are actually incredible. Uh, uh, Godric is just... Man, that shit is fucking crazy. Like, oh my god. Like, yeah, the, the mechanic... Like, I didn't think Godric was, like, really that hard. But... It was so fucking cool. It was one of the coolest bosses I've ever seen, you know? And I'm not going to spoil a whole lot of it, but what I am going to say is that I fucking loved it. It was an incredible boss, even though it, you know, it didn't took me like maybe two or three or four tries. Uh, but even then, I, I still really had a lot of fun, and I'll have fun doing it again probably on New Game Plus and seeing, uh, you know, what, <laughs> what more intricacies I can learn after probably beating my head against the wall on it for a few more hours. And so... Uh, a lot of really great bosses. I think also the uh, mounted combat is... The truth is, man, like, that horse has a mind of its own. Like, I will tell it to go here, and it'll... Woo! It just goes right off the fucking edge. I don't know. I think that horse has killed me more than any boss. Straight up. That horse has killed me more than any boss in the game. And it's not even close, by the way. It might be all the bosses put together versus the horse. Uh, I do play the games, and this might upset some people. I play the games with mouse and keyboard. It's what I'm familiar with. It's what I'm best with. I played Bloodborne and Demon Souls, of course, with the PlayStation controller. But uh, with Elden Ring, I play it with a keyboard and mouse. I feel extremely comfortable playing the game. But obviously, the uh, PC port, and this is another issue I want to talk about a little bit, is the PC port for uh, Elden Ring has had a lot of problems. Uh, I run a uh, 
uh, I run a, I think it's an i9 processor. It's a like maybe eight out of 10 i9 processor with a 3080. And I was even getting like massive frame rate slowdowns. Like whenever I was fighting certain bosses, for example, like the, uh, the tree knight, I think that's his name at the very beginning, the gold guy with the fucking, that's a halberd. Uh, there's that guy, and I had a pretty hard time uh, fighting him because I had to make sure that I didn't look in certain directions because that would slow down my FPS to like maybe, I don't know, like 12 or so. And so there were some pretty bad optimization issues. I think that this has been reported by enough people to pretty much assume that this is probably something that has to do with optimization and not people's computers. But I think with a lot of things, it's always a give and take. And there's some people that have more of these issues or less of these issues. I would assume that if I had a 3090 or, you know, in the future, a 3090 Ti, it would probably not be as bad. So uh, that is frustrating for a lot of people. And I do think that that just kind of sucks. And uh, PC ports and like playing the game on PC is what I really prefer. I think that is the best experience personally. And I look forward to being able to like, for example, like Dark Souls 3, the reason why I've played Dark Souls 3 so much is because I've played through a lot of the mods for Dark Souls 3 because I, I find them fun. And uh, those mods are much easier, access, much more easily accessible on, on a PC. So uh, yeah, I think that the PC port definitely was an issue and it definitely sucks. I mean, that's really all there is to it. I mean, if you look in certain areas in the game and your FPS goes down to 10, and this is happening to 90% of the people and nowhere else in the entire game this happens, it's clearly this is an optimization issue and it's bad. Does this ruin the game? No. Is it bad? Yeah. So that's basically how I feel about it. Uh, other than that, let's see, combat. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm a one-trick Andy. I just go with the biggest weapon, the biggest bonks, and I just do that. Uh, I've decided not to use uh, fat rolling. This, this, uh, sorry, uh, you know, I, I don't want to fat shame myself, but uh, I've decided not to use fat rolling for Elden Ring and actually play the game like a normal person this time. And uh, it's been fun, as I said before. I have really enjoyed the game, and uh, I don't really do a lot of uh, sorceries. I don't really have tried. I, I feel like this is maybe just me being an asshole, but I feel like if you use a summon to kill the boss, did you really kill the boss, or did the summon kill the boss? You know, like, I don't know. I feel like I've never had to use a summon before on one of these bosses. Uh, I, I hope if I ever do, people meme it into oblivion. But uh, I'll say for sure that, um, I, you know, there are a lot of ways, and this is, again, something that a lot of people might not really understand, is that Dark Souls 1 and 3 and many of these games, outside of Sekiro, because Sekiro doesn't have as many tools for this, uh, they have an easy mode. Uh, you use summons. You use the wolf summons. You use a uh, better weapon. You level up so you have more strength and health. Uh, all of these games, including Elden Ring, they do have an easy mode. It's just that that isn't a toggleable option in the menu. That's a way of playing the game. And so I think that as the game becomes more solved and as people flesh out more of the game and begin to understand it better, you'll see more guides and more information and more tools for new players to kind of have that easy mode if they choose to. And I actually think that the new player experience for Elden Ring for that reason will actually improve over time because you'll have more people that want to look up a guide and they have like a definitive go here, 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 here. Now you have your plus five weapon, go one shot Margaret, right? And then you don't have to spend three hours fighting the boss. You just fucking kill him in three or four hits. Or not three or four hits, but you see what I'm saying, right? Uh, you do it much faster and you're much, much higher level. So I think that the more that that information comes out, the more theory crafting, metagaming that happens in Elden Ring, I think that'll be really beneficial for new players, especially the new players to the Souls series, because they'll have somebody who effectively does what the game uh, is not supposed to do, which is hold your hand the whole way. Uh, I do want to say, though, again, uh, with the stream, I uh, get extremely tilted with uh, Elden Ring. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's with all from software games. I fucking hate them sometimes. But I will, uh, I, I also really enjoy it. And uh, I will probably continue trying to stream the game a little bit more just because I've had fun with it, uh, regardless of uh, anything else. Uh, I just, I, I, like, I like playing the game. So uh, sometimes, at least. So yeah, I mean, that's basically the way that I feel about it. Uh, I think Elden Ring definitely has deserved a lot of the praise that it's had, uh, you know, like post, uh, post launch and also pre launch. I feel like it's probably one of the most like well designed games. And I, I think also like a big factor here is like uh, Bloodborne, there's a lot of, it's like a new world is a game. Like if you play new world a lot, like you'd know that like the more precise and the more 
intricacies you and the more you uh what's the word for it the more you like you put the combat under a microscope and like the interactions under a microscope in new world the more problems you see <laughs> the more uh you know wait a second i was out of that or wait a minute how does this even work why does this happen right and I think that with Bloodborne, there were some of those problems. Uh, I think that with Dark Souls 3, there were very few of them, but there were a handful of them. Dark Souls 2 obviously had a million. Dark Souls 1 had a handful. Sekiro basically didn't have any, but Sekiro also did not have a lot of depth in their combat. Or sorry, a lot of breadth in their combat. Sekiro had extremely deep combat, but it didn't have very wide combat. You're using your fucking sword, and that's it. So with uh, Elden Ring, you have so many more options, so many more tools, and whenever you put those tools and those options under a microscope, they do stand up to that criticism. And I think that's probably one of the biggest accomplishments of the game, is uh, the breadth of abilities that you can use, the amount of ways that you can approach the game. I think one of the best things about From Software games is the fact that they ask you to get to the number four. And you can do two plus two to get to four, you can do three plus one, four plus zero, Five minus one, negative four plus positive eight. You know, if you're using, I don't know, you're starting with a wrench and you're only going to use a club. You know, it sounds like a negative four plus positive eight situation. And um, you can use a lot of different uh, ways, but you all arrive at the same place, which is succeeding. And I think that the fact that the game gives you so many different ways to succeed, that are all to some degree. I mean, I'll be. I mean, of course, obviously, some are better than others to a degree. Uh, all different viable options to succeed, I consider that a massive success. I consider that a tremendous success, to be honest. And it's probably one of the best things about a game like Dark Souls 3. It's the main thing that I think makes Dark Souls 3 the best Dark Souls, is because there are so many different ways that you can play the game, especially whenever you see people that are modding it to slightly alter some of the values and things like that to make it even more balanced. I think Elden Ring has that very well, and I think that it accommodates a wider range of play styles uh, than any other Souls game ever has. And so, yeah, uh, Elden Ring, definitely, I would say it's a 10 out of 10 game. While, while it is extremely frustrating for me as a streamer to play the game, I think the game itself, fundamentally, and whenever I'm playing it off stream, is probably, it's just, it's a game that I want to just sit down and just play the game. I just want to go over there. Let's go over there. Let's see what's up there. Let's see down there. And it's just a world that I want to explore. And I think the perspective that I'm going to try to take with Elden Ring and streaming it is I'm going to treat it a little bit more like an MMO and a little bit less like a uh, uh, like a Soulsborne game. I think I'll just try to play it and take it as I go. And uh, hopefully that'll work. Hopefully people will enjoy it. Hopefully you guys will, uh, will like it. But yeah, that's my first impressions of Elden Ring. I think I'll probably do a review of the game once I beat the game, maybe uh, two or three times or so. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to not be as much, much of a one trick and use some different weapons too on the second and third playthroughs also. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's the way I feel about it. I think it is a 10 out of 10 game. It's incredible. I love Souls games. And I think that people that are uh, fans of Souls games are going to love uh, Elden Ring. And I, it, in many ways, it is transformative. In the eyes of the uninitiated, it's not. And you know what? That's fine. Dodging and rolling and hitting, if that's all you want to do, that's totally fine. Because as I said, you can get to four however you want, and that works. So anyway, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts and your opinions and your impressions with Elden Ring, and if they were any different than mine. But yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Great game. I would absolutely recommend it based off of my time playing the game. So that's all I've got, guys. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, peace.